Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome, and I open this regular meeting of council for February the 1st, 2022. Result of the agenda for the February 1st, 2022 regular meeting of council be adopted, moved by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Bobbing. All in favor? It's carried. Aye. It's carried. Result of the minutes of the January the 18th, 2022 regular council meeting be approved. Moved by Councilor Delorier, seconded by Councilor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? It's carried. Receptions, delegations, and hearings for 4.1. We have with us tonight Mr. Jack Dick from the Swan Valley Interagency. And Mr. Dick, we thank you for attending tonight, and I will let you take it from here. Right on. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, councillors. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to share tonight. Um, uh, I want to, I've been invited actually to uh, talk about Swan Valley Interagency. Um, I want to tell you that um, in Swan Valley Interagency has been in existence since uh, March of 1993. And uh, I'm not sure whether I'm proud or uh, what to say that uh, I was one of the founding members of the interagency. So um, it's just about time. And I believe this will probably be my last uh, presentation on this, this uh, organization. Anyway, just a little bit about it, the history of it. Um, Swan Valley Interagency came into being in March of 1993. How many of you would remember Shelley Ray? Yeah, so there are a few. So Shelley Ray and I were standing in the uh, um, area in the Friendship Center and we were talking about the challenges that there were that existed between government agencies communicating. And um, that's kind of the, uh, kind of, and I'm sure there were others that had some ideas like that as well, but that was kind of the beginning <coughs> of the interagency. It came, in, came into being in March of 1993 with 17 founding member agencies. Shortly after its inception, the membership grew until it became well over 40 various agencies who claimed membership. The vision of the Swan Valley Interagency was to benefit the Swan Valley community as a complete whole. This was done or is done by working together with related organizations to identify health and social needs within the community and to initiate programs and services to address the identified needs. The mission was to improve school, agency, and community working relationships to better coordinate services for the common client. So in March of 1993, it became apparent to some of the local agencies that there needed to be a vehicle developed to facilitate communication between agencies, most particularly between government agencies themselves and as well their cooperating organizations. Because at that time, Swan Valley School Division had the capability to organize and to operate such an organization. They were, need, they were the needed catalyst to get things going. For this reason, the focus of, of the interagency was to work with students and their families as the target group. This, of course, has many spin-offs into the community at large, and so it was a good fit. The main idea was communication. Uh, this then grew into learning and also into identifying local needs and determining ways to meet the identified needs. The group generally meets every two months and member and a member organization will report, pardon me, member organizations will report on activities and upcoming events and there will often be a showcase presentation to enable all of us to learn and to grow. <clears throat> Frequently what would occur is that a community group would identify a need and be invited to present at the interagency regular meeting. Following the presentation, the interagency would determine if the need presented fit and if it fit, a plan was developed as to how to assist in meeting the need. Some examples of these uh, committees would be, uh, for example, the FASD committee, uh, fetal alcohol syndrome committee, which, uh, which um, evolved into a support group for parents with kids having FAS. Uh, there was a committee for uh, the elimination of sexual ab abuse, and from this committee came a, a support group for victims. Um, Triple P Parenting with uh, Debbie Burnside, who used to work at the, uh, at the school, you know, the school division. Better Beginnings, and just to tell you a little story about Better Beginnings, uh, when Bill Schaefer was the superintendent of the school division, he made a presentation to 
interagency, and he uh, his contention was at that time that uh, preschool kids weren't uh, necessarily getting the stimulation in a lot of families that they needed in order to be prepared for uh, for school, and so he um, uh, suggested something that would be called Better Beginnings. I don't know how many of you have heard of Better Beginnings, but uh, that was the beginning of it, and it was offered in all the communities within the valley, um, Bozeman, Benito, so on and so forth, and uh, it was a group basically that came together with young kids, moms, dads, whatever, came together with young kids and they did educational things together and and so on as a uh, lead into to uh, their education. Also, another one was, uh, was and continues to be uh, the High Risk Youth Committee. Now, the High Risk Youth Committee has, has changed its name because one of the concerns there was was when people heard high risk youth, that automatically uh, put some uh, ideas into people's minds. And so um, we instead changed it to Succeed. And for those of you, you, you may know the Succeed program, which continues to operate today through the Albert Charter and Friendship Center. And there's more examples, and I'll talk about uh, a couple of them uh, later on. <coughs> Excuse me, not COVID, by the way. One of the uh, missing pieces that we always felt that was lacking within the interagency was the business piece. Uh, government doesn't often do a good job of solving the issues that need to be solved. And so we really felt that the, uh, the missing kind of piece in the whole picture was, was business. And um, recently when the business consortium came into being, we felt that this was a real win-win. Interagency had some things that we could offer and we could offer some things to the business consortium. So as a result of that, a couple of things have come and, and, if, and I believe you have had some presentations, Derek Armstrong and and the like have been here to present about uh, the business consortium. And um, a couple of, uh, the business consortium has identified four, I guess it was the task force that identified four different areas uh, of need within the community. And um, so a couple, of the, a couple of things I'm gonna mention, which the interagency has been involved with, um, fit right into uh, the needs of the business consortium or the identified needs. So one of them, of course, is Meet Off Maine. Uh, Meet Off Maine is a uh, group of individuals that volunteer their time uh, every two weeks. Um, we get together, we open up the uh, Red Road Compass um, facility on Fifth Avenue and uh, between the hours of four and eight, um, that, that building is open for drop-in, uh, drop-in individuals. And um, we offer, the idea behind Meet Off Maine is to offer services to uh, individuals that may not um, plug into services in regular work hours or may feel uh, maybe uncomfortable coming into government offices or other offices and the like. And uh, so we opened up the Meet Off Main. Uh, there is uh, food available, there is um, um, internet service, all, the, all kinds of uh, facilities available for, for folks and um, it is uh, staffed uh, by volunteers and um, what we have been able to do is we've had one evening that was uh, uh, birth, birth certificate application evening. Uh, we had another evening for social insurance number applications. Um, there's been um, other things like that that are intended to assist, you know, some of our folks that, that uh, wander around town in the middle of the night or, or middle of the day as well to uh, hopefully get uh, some services that they may not get otherwise. There's also some health, um, health things that are available, health, what do I call them? Um, various health things that could be available and that again are donated by uh, some very, very well-meaning folks within the community. The, vol the volunteers and the, the um, contributions from uh, organizations have been just, just incredible to see how they've come in. So that, uh, that is organized through the interagency. Uh, and we also, uh, of course, uh, marry that together with many other organizations in town. We work closely with the RCMP uh, and with many other organizations as well. Another really good example of something that the inter interagency has done is that um, a few years ago, <clears throat> it's probably, I don't know, I wanna guess 10 years ago, Phil, you might be able to know this better than me, but, um, Interagency was, was approached by an organization called um, Healthy Child Manitoba. And uh, Healthy Child Manitoba um, had some funds that were available to 
uh, work with communities, uh, to uh, work with families and, and so on and so forth, just to grow better families, I guess, if you will. And um, they had a, a stash of money that they were looking to get rid of and, and to spend in our community. There were four communities throughout Canada that were selected to do this project. And uh, to this date, actually, um, Communities That Care is the only one I believe that's, that still continues to operate within the province or within the country. Um, the whole the whole intent at that time was that there was going to be a, a international survey taken. Um, uh, was was um, um, operated out of Washington, I think. Yes, I think that's right. Yeah, and. Um, um, and then we were all to use the, the findings from the, the survey and uh, just create a program within the community. And so Communities That Care came into being and those you will, you will um, know Communities That Care primarily through the Spooktoberfest activity and Toys for the North and, and many, many other things that Bev... Toys for You. Toys for You, right. I was trying to think of the term and I couldn't think of it. 424 this year. There we go. Look at that. So um, uh, both uh, Bev, Bev, who has been the, uh, the coordinator for years, and then Lorianne took it over for a while. And I think Bev's kind of back a little bit, kind of, and Phil's going to take it over no. next year. Anyway, so those have been a couple of things that, that inter interagency has been um, um, in in instrumental in um, bringing to the community. Um, a few years ago, just... Uh, Again, just a little bit of context here, but a few years ago, the late Carol Hunter and I were walking towards and were walking to an uh, interagency inter -agency meeting. We were discussing what the next steps for interagency were. I was ready at that time to allow it a slow death as I felt that it had reached its apex and was spiraling. Carol said, you know, I think we need to develop a constitution and a mission statement and uh, put some meat behind what we've got. Well, you can see who won that one and it's a very good thing. Interagency has struggled through COVID, the busyness of members, and the retirement of chartered members, etc. But I believe it is here for a long time to come. I would also tell you that um, it's probably one of the, the least known committees within the community. It seems that very few people know about it. Uh, and that's maybe not a bad thing, I'm not sure. But um, uh, a few years ago, those of you that are here that are really ancient will remember uh, Shauna Jackson. Shauna... Oh, Anybody that's nodding is not young. Uh, Shauna actually was a part of the interagency and when she was working for the Star and Times did several articles on it. Um, and we were known a little bit more at that time, but uh, over time we've kind of uh, struggled with uh, publicity in a sense. So really, uh, I'm not sure what more I can say. Um, what's what's happened recently is, is um, we've had a lot of um, expansion in the health Field. There's a lot of positions within our community working in the health field, in public relations, and in, in um, you know, wellness and so on and so forth. And, and, and the people working there have really, really stepped into roles within interagency and, and really helped us out and are doing a lot of things. A lot of them that, that uh, staff, excuse me, staff meet off Maine um, come from the PMH and stuff like that. So it's, it's, been, um, it's been so good to see. So I don't know if there's any questions. Okay. Any thoughts? I'm sure that there is probably going to be, but I just wanted to mention that uh, you, you mentioned that uh, you said some of our maybe prehistoric people that might be here to remember uh, <laughs> Shauna Jackson, and I remember her very well. <laughs> I, I hope that I don't be. I'm not considered to be too prehistoric, but anyway, it was it, it was a good comment. But uh, Shauna was really good in the community, and, and definitely we yeah. we miss her. Um, you know, on behalf of council and, and, and the citizens of the town of Swan River and the Valley, I do want to, you know, thank you and congratulate you on, on the years that you have dedicated yourself to this. Mm. I'm sure that it has never been always easy and there's always been some barriers and so forth, but we do appreciate your time because there has been people in this community and in the community also that benefit from mm. your hard work as well. So I mm. thank, thank you for you. that. Councilor Deloria. Um, I guess, I, first of all, I want to echo Mayor Jacobs' comments of, you know, of the good work that your organization does. Thank you for, for all that. And um, I think you touched on it near the end there with, with the, the publicity issue, and that's kind of what spurred us inviting you to council mm -hmm. here is because 
a lot of us didn't have a, a fully fleshed out idea of, of what interagency was or did or, or how they operated it. So you did, you did a wonderful job on, on laying it all out there and, and showing us how that, you know, they've had their interagency has had their fingers in a lot of a lot of pies over the years over things that are, are meaningful to the community. So, and thank you for that. And thank you for, for you know, clarifying that mm -hmm. for all of us. Um, and I guess just for one other point of clarification, because it came up in our discussions on what inter interagency was, it's different than Jessica Lacasse's group where they, you know, if they identify, I'd say, a, 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 so, uh, like a, a social or health need in, in, the, in the community and different organizations may, uh, I'm, I'm right in saying that? that it's no, actually, this is Jessica Lacasse's organization. She's actually the president or chairman, I forget what we call our, our leader, but she is. So she should be here sitting in this chair, but okay. uh, is not. But th that's one and the same. Okay, so it's one and the same. So if yeah. there's a, a family or an individual in the community that has, you know, an issue, this is the group that, that yeah. figures out what, what services to be provided. Yeah, okay. yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Right. Just so we're, yeah, that came up. So again, thank you very yeah. much. Council White. Yeah, I wonder, I echo all my previous comments. This thing mm -hmm. that you guys produce, I believe, mean, it's all yep. on one page. And, you know, there's, but some people don't have it, some people can't read, I suspect. So it's a pretty important piece of paper. I'm wondering, and I appreciate uh, your comments of working with the business consortium. Can you see <coughs> you guys helping one another? Oh, very definitely. Um, uh, the four, and Johnny, you might be able to help me with this, but the, uh, the, um, a task force that's that's under the business consortium has identified four uh, areas that uh, they want to focus in on. And uh, oh my goodness, John, what in the world? Uh, anyway, the one of them is is uh, working with individuals to gain training and education, and so on and so forth. And so the Succeed program fits in with that. The Succeed program is is answerable to the interagency. We we in a sense hatched it. Uh, That's your so second chance employment group. Yes. There you go. Would the succeed follow under second chance? It does. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. I'm trying to read the paper and it's not working. Uh, <clears throat> so one of the one of the identified needs or areas that we're working on with the task force is second chance employment. And second chance employment has the the uh, succeed program underneath it. It's a little complicated, but um, it all works. So succeed is is uh, and maybe just succeed through the friendship center is. Uh, in the person of Lorianne Monroe, um, at, the, at this time anyway. Um, and it basically works on life skills for primarily for in, um, uh, income assistance folks. Um, she's developed a phenomenal program and, and um, I would say to bring um, what recognition to my department, we, we fund the Succeed program, so I'm very proud of it. Uh, Lorianne has done incredible work there and the Friendship Center has done such good work with, with a lot of those folks. So. I appreciate your comments uh, about Carol. Carol is a, oh. a dear friend of mine, and I'll be seeing her husband. I'll make a point of my suit every day. So yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, Mr. Jack Dick, thank you again for uh, sharing information with us. Um, again, in the beginning of your your comments, um, you did share a little bit that uh, this may be the last meeting that you are involved with, and I know that uh, you are trying to <laughs> slow down. Um, and having said that, from myself, I just want to thank you for all of the years that you sat on many committees that I have been a part of, everything from the Chamber of Commerce to the task force to the consortium, and uh, uh, your wisdom and uh, your demeanor always carries a special place when I attend meetings and when mm -hmm. I hold meetings. So for that, I appreciate appreciate everything you've done, and you have uh, you have my attention, you have my respect always. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thank you, Mom. Appreciate that. So, is there any other further comments or questions? So, I guess one of the reasons why uh, we asked you here, a you answered some of them, but. In the past, we've always appointed a member of council to yes, interagency. That's right, too. And so, I guess the question is, is that you need a representative from council to to be a part of interagency going forth. It okay. would be good. And so then, you still are meeting uh, 
regularly or because of COVID you're not? So COVID, it's, it's uh, made it a little bit more difficult. Um, we're in a little bit of a, what's a good way to put it? We're very, very much focusing on the meat off Maine and, and that has kind of taken a lot of our attention. Uh, but we, we are having regular meetings still and, and uh, will. And if you would like, um, we would like um, a council representative. And if you would like, we can notify when the next meeting is and, and uh, just you can take it from there if you like. Okay. Well, we'll be in contact with you about that. Wonderful. Then. We do That'd appreciate be great. you coming and clarifying all that. And, and we'll definitely have a member uh, attend your uh, important meetings. I have one more, if I may just say one more thing, Mr. Mayor, right. thank you. Uh, just, uh, I just want to mention, and this is, um, <laughs> this is, uh, this is, this is a different topic kind of in a sense, but I just, I just want to thank the town of Swan River. Um, the town has taken two of our largest uh, projects within the community, um, and that's our, our government department's two largest programs, that being Swan Valley Employment and Training Project and the Department of Recreation Work Crew. Um, and I just want to really commend the, the town of Swan River for taking those projects. Uh, I want to thank, um, I want to thank the, the uh, council and I want to thank particularly the staff uh, to work together with these, um, these, these individuals has just been, just been phenomenal. Uh, Derek, um, Terry as well, and Uriah, Brendan, and many others as well, just to work together with our projects. It's, it's uh, uh, been a pleasure and uh, it's just so so good to be able to work together and to make our community a better place. And I really think these two projects have been successful to some degree in doing that. And it's only because of the willingness of council and, and the staff. So thank you. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm glad that you brought that up because often we talk about how valuable we find that relationship. Yeah. And uh, it's been a win-win situation for everybody. And we definitely want to see continue on uh, down the future because it, it's very beneficial to the community yeah. in, in more than just one way yeah. you know individually and, and, and for the community as well yeah. so mm -hmm. thank you okay any further discussion okay well with that again thanks for coming out tonight thank you and enjoy uh, your rest of your evening and i'm sure we'll see you around but oh you will you will but uh you're still a total <laughs> <laughs> All right, take I'm here, here for a little bit yet. But thanks very much, folks. Thank Have you. a good evening. Okay, so moving on to uh, six communications, six point one, result of the RCMP Municipal Police Service invoice package for the period October first to December thirty first, two thousand twenty one, be received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wood Tony, seconded by. Please second that. Councillor White, all uh, discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Aye. It's carried. <clears throat> and I'll note that Councillor Morio is, has a delay there, so I'll try to wait a little bit longer for him, um, but uh, he did vote in favor. 6.2. Result of the Swan Valley Veterinarian Services District financial statements for the year ended December 31st, 2020, be received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Just to note that the vet I'm on, I sit on that board, and that board has not met for some time, and last week was the first time we met in a long time, so a lot of these resolutions are just they're a little bit late so we do apologize all in favor aye it's carried 6.3 result of the swan valley veterinarian service district case load report for january the first to january the uh, june the 20th 2021 be received moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? Just maybe a note on that too, that you, the discussion uh, from the uh, clinic has stated that uh, there's the, the caseload for small animals versus large has, has changed dramatically in the, in the last few years. Obviously maybe due to less cattle and so forth, but uh, definitely 
at the, uh, the the trend is like small animals are a big part of their their business now. Discussion, Councilor White. Mr. Government, uh, January to June the thirtieth, two thousand two hundred one small animals. The cases they've seen, mm -hmm. uh, nine hundred eighty food producing animals, like big pigs and cows. Yeah, that's a big problem. Councilor Bobbitt. Well, when you say small animals, is that cats you're talking about? Yeah. Or that's a, yeah. Is there any tracking on how many of those are rural? There isn't. There's there was some discussion around the table about that, but it didn't really go very far. But it, there, um, our rural representatives did state though that it's important for us to continue on in the the, the levies the way that they are, and that um, they realize that not all small animals come from town. There are small animals that come out the road too. For the discussion, all in favor. Aye. Carried. 6.4, result, uh, result of the Veterinarian Services accredited large and small maximum schedules for of fees for 2022 be received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor White. Discussion? So just for any that have not uh, paid in much attention or been to the vet board or vet clinic or has had questions about fees of our um, uh, vet clinic, these fees are actually set by the province. So any municipal veterinarian clinic <coughs> in the province of Manitoba follows these rates. So these are actually set by the province. Further discussion, Councillor Delorier. Did you guys uh, elect a new chairperson? We have. Yes. Uh, Councillor Forbes is the new um, uh, chair. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Aye. Sorry, it's carried. Okay, moving on. Uh, 7, 7.2, Council reports. Council Delorier. Uh, the only thing I had was uh, watershed meeting. Uh, we had our election that night and then had a board meeting afterwards. I just want to congratulate Councillor Bobbick on his re-election as chairman of the watershed. And uh, uh, other than that, um, nothing else. <coughs> okay. I'm going to go straight to Councillor Morio if we still have connection with you, just in case we lose you. Hey, um, the only thing I had was the Provincial Justice Advisory Committee, which I uh, shared with you guys at our last COW meeting last week. Um, the majority of that was uh, in confidence, but uh, some of the work topics uh, was uh, crime issues across the province and the RCMP uh, retroactive uh, wage increases and uh, upcoming bills, which AMM and our committee is working on with the province um, towards federal government on coming to a resolution on that anyways. <coughs> and that's all I had. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Bobbitt. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, Watershed, yes, that's uh, happened. I am the chair. Councillor Larry Pomolchuk is vice chair. The board more or less has stayed pretty much the same. But we have one new member uh, in the mountain. Other than that, just lots of smoke. We talked to uh, Jordan a bit, Derek a bit here, but uh, no end of it. Doesn't seem like it, but our guys will keep working on it. That's it? That's it. Okay, Councilor White. Before I start, I'd uh, just a compliment uh, with Shaw, your, was your executive director. I sat on a meeting with him last night, recently. And uh, he was exemplary what you guys do and how you do it. He was with the LP. Oh, yeah. He did a really, really good job. So please thank him for, for us. Uh, Councillor uh, Friesen and myself and Mr. Poole had a meeting with some people from Thompson, a couple of the, uh, they went as a council, a couple of the friendly uh, appointees. And it was uh, very enlightening for me, and I thank you, Derek, for setting that up. Uh, we have needs, they have needs. We're trying to find the common needs. 
I talked about a monthly newsletter. And interestingly, it's a young city. There's no senior center in Thompson yet. So I found that uh, quite interesting. They want to involve the seniors, which makes sense. So I propose to start times. And uh, Mr. Kilroy and I will be, and, and uh, Health and Freezer will be getting together next week to do that. And they want to get the indigenous senior, seniors more involved. So, and I also made a point of talk to Ken Monroe, and Ken wants to take part in the next meeting that we have. And the number one goal they had to work with, which we heard from this gentleman that just left, was communication. Uh, and I, I put this first, determine if intended audience, including older adults and isolated people, receive the information they need. And I just think I drove by the, the sign at the front of the pool that says the ice is still in. Our ice is in, and I and I, I, I frustrate that. I'm so frustrated with that because we've been talking about that for two months, and his team, I'm sure, have the capability to change the flipping sign, as other teams do. So, uh, one option, I guess, would maybe bring a, a motion to council at the next meeting, but two months to get a sign change that uh, sounds like some sort of government bureaucracy sometimes. So I apologize for that, but it's very frustrating. January the 29th, uh, I went to uh, Roblin. Uh, representing uh, the town to some degree and PMH and the MLA went with us and it was all about health care and recruitment of doctors. They're now to one as often as we complain. Uh, <laughs> we're so far ahead in so many ways and had a lot of empathy. They're looking at methods, uh, they're operating financial incentives the same as we do, possibly with houses, cars. So it's a competitive market out there. So uh, I would encourage people to uh, be pretty happy with what we got, not to be complacent. I think we still have to. But, um, then last night I went to the LP stakeholders list, uh, stakeholders, there's some really neat things there. LP, uh, which is probably the number one after agriculture in our community, there's a bit of a, uh, a litigation going on with some of our First Nations uh, friends to the east. And I quote LP, we are committed to work with indigenous people for now and forever. And they want to work. There's some debate about the consultation process, which is adequate or not. And uh, they've hired 16 more people to work out on that new building. Have you built a new building, Councillor, out there already? It's, it's built, so, uh, not up and running yet, though. Just a, it was 15 to 20 million dollars. And their siting process are over. Uh, they're using LIDAR a lot, uh, not LP specific. So that was from the Conservation District to measure slope so they know where to put the dams so the water will all end up in the right spot. And yeah, what else did they tell us for that? We'll have to bring it back. Outfitters, and we talked about uh, what abuse industry is that for our community. And, uh, with the snow, a lot of people are thinking they should be feeding the deer. And if you're following the, the, the CWD it, it, disease, which was in South of us at Robin, which is pretty darn close, the uh, consensus was we better not feed the deer. And when you bring them together, the noses touch, the saliva touch, and that virus is with, it, with them, they can spread it within those animals. And if they're to die, I guess uh, that's the way it's going to be. Ownership planning was great, CWD, we mentioned that. Uh, question, I, I thought of, they're, they're nearly close, I'm just thinking roughly 20 years to be back at the original cut. The whole concept, they've like cut 60th of the mountain, so every 60 years they should be back to where they had their first cut. If it works perfectly, if the soil is right, if the weather is right, everything else can change it. They're very optimistic that uh, they're very close to having the 30 year, the 60 year rotation work as they planned. Uh, I think that I found interesting with the loss of uh, life plus winter in, in the Duck Mountain for a snowman trail and an LP road. We're all one for a while. They don't, they don't want ever that to ever happen again. So they now at the most they're going to do is cut through the uh, snowman trail. They put signs, four way signs, the gravel there to get so the trucks can get through. They may parallel, but they won't. Neither body should ever have to be on that same road anymore other than crossing. Uh, disease, it was really a neat point. They showed us some photography. I'm going to grab a number 15 years ago. It was a vibrant forest. They showed us photography now. The forest is gone. It hasn't touched by a blade. It hasn't been touched by a saw. There's two diseases. There's spruce budworm, and there's malarium or solarium. There's one that goes into the parents. They cleaned it out in 10 years before the LP guys could come and use that, make that version of the timber. It was gone. So, uh, they're in there trying to get that before they lose it, obviously. So rather than waste timber, which would rot and go into the soil, LP's done a pretty good job of uh, solarium, malaria, something like that. Uh, 
the, the, the sport fish dinner is first weekend in May, lots of money coming to our town. And I have two or three questions. Uh, I'm just going to sow a seed right now. I've been talking, unless you already have a letter with the chairman of the school division. I've been concerned about protests on school property. I don't see why they can't handle it themselves, to be honest, it's their property. And protests around hospitals, regardless of the origin of the protest. They ask us to start thinking about would we make a bylaw. Uh, I don't know if this is the time, but the SPL, uh, some of our team was going to go out and talk to Spruce Brothers management and see how that was going relative to water. Anything to report there? That would be in camera. Pardon? In that camera? would be in okay, camera. Thank you. So uh, that's it. We're pretty busy, but please be alive. Okay, thank you, Council White. Council Friesen. Mm -hmm. um, I also attended the uh, Zoom meeting with Councilor Wright and CAO. Um, and it was Manitoba age friendly, is what we are called. And uh, communication seems to be the biggest issue. Um, I have reached out to uh, services to seniors, um, and Kay Markland is to get back to me. So I just have a chat with her, and maybe uh, organize a meeting that we can all get together. And um, hats off to the EMS guys. Augie's had several rides in the ambulance, and he thinks those guys and girls are super. They're so kind, they're so obliging. So kudos to you, EMS people. Um, also, we have a telehealth, and that is very handy, so you don't have to drive to Winnipeg. You just talk to them on your um, And it says servers are down. Tomorrow. What is that about? I'm sorry, I don't understand. Uh, there's, a, a, <coughs> there's a scheduled West Shut shutdown from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. Okay. So we may not have internet. Oh. Um, that's it. Okay, thanks, nice. Council Friesen. Uh, Dipper Mayor Lynn Tony. Thank you, Your Worship. And just to inform Council, we did have a RISE meeting. Uh, in that RISE meeting, a couple items came forth. It was uh, the group did have a chance to review the exit interview with our former um, EDO, so that was discussed, as well as um, Mr. Ganita and the town of Swan River were appointed uh, in term. Um, tre Secretary elect treasurer for the time being until. Um, rise is established in, or a direction of establishment is had so um, there'll be some discussion at that uh, I would imagine that we should probably discuss that in camera maybe um, and just a little uh, going back a little bit to Mr. Jack Dick's uh, presentation too on uh, interagency and the organizations that are part of that and just kind of recapping and and maybe I don't do a uh, well enough job inform, informing council of uh, the business consortium and task force so uh, I'm just going to give a quick update on that uh, the business consortium obviously is the main organization from the consortium it's come the task force as Jack mentioned there are four four areas that the uh, group defined as uh, the most crucial areas for the community, one being the second chance uh, employment group, and that again is where Lori Ann Monroe fits in with the Succeed program and with the Friendship Center, as well as Lana Sagert is the chairperson of that committee who runs the um, NIT, the National Institute of Trade and Technology. Uh, which is a partnership with the Swan Valley School Division. So there's a big education component to it, as well as the economic development piece, looking at um, um, what driving needs are there in the community for those individuals who obtain um, training, and also looking at training for um, certain businesses that may want to come into our communities or a lack of those communities businesses in our community to train and hopefully if we can train locally we can have local businesses staying here. 
Um, the other one is Meet Off Maine, and that is an interagency um, coordinated effort along with many other organizations that fall under that umbrella. Um, so Meet Off Maine, as Jack indicated, I'm not going to go into that uh, further because I don't want to take a lot of time. And then uh, we have Tier 1 housing, something that is uh, desperately needed for our community in which James Wigley of CMHA is the chair person for that. Um, and that is coming along. There are a lot of uh, roads to, to climb, hills to climb, but we are forging forward um, and we will see successes out of that. And of course, again, that was working with the um, the um, with Amy Shaw and her group um, so they're a part of that organization <coughs> or that group as well and then finally the uh, restorative justice committee that uh, takes on the COPP program as well and, um, just for that program the COPP know they, knowing that there are 22 members we still travel in and the requirement is traveling with two members um, in the vehicle at all times. So really that's 11, 11 cars of COPP members, which is never enough. There could always be more. Um, we do have a few people on the waiting list for the next training session. So if there are others um, that you may know that can benefit the COPP program and want to uh, volunteer some time and and offer support and, su and suggestions to the community rather than just complaining about it. The door is wide open, the applications are readily available, and I have no issue ensuring that you receive one of those. So that uh, takes care of the task force. My other question, I guess, to, to you, Mr. Poole, is uh, on snow clearing today, if you can just give me a quick rundown where we're at and what that looked like today. I, I mean, I did drive around town and it was not, that was, I, I don't have time for that. So if you can just tell me what, where we are in the snow cleaning route um, and when our crew started and the expectation of, or the expected finishing time for the community. I, I believe they started on day one today. So they did Raw Street and Ninth. The loader's out as well doing back leans and, and, and that map check the, the website so uh, we'll, we'll move on to day two three four we should be done hopefully i don't want to say by the end of the week there's a lot of snow up there but what people can't expect are our streets to narrow even though we did have some cleanup uh, uh earlier in january the streets <coughs> will be narrow so just to be cautious and drive to conditions excellent thank you very much for that that is all I have today, Your Worship. Okay, thank you, Councillor or Diplomat Um For myself, um, I guess I'll start with uh, uh, on the 20th of January, I had an opportunity to uh, meet with Prairie Mountain Health and uh, their uh, recruiting team uh, <coughs> to recruit uh, some of the LPN nursing uh, students. And uh, there was 11 uh, students that joined it in on that Zoom session, um, basically talking about you know the incentives that the Prairie Mountain Health and the province offers, but also we uh, expanded into my opportunity to uh, express to invite them to our community and uh, and what we have to offer as a G four uh, to recruit these individuals to uh, a much needed. Uh, you know, uh, jobs in this in this community. We know that our hospital is is lacking a lot of these positions, so we are trying to do the best we possibly can to recruit. Unfortunately, we did have to meet by Zoom, so it's not as effective as if you could have meet them in person. But I, I think that we did get the ear from a few of them, and uh, and hoping that we'll hear from uh, some of those individuals that might be interested and perhaps soon we'll be able to actually meet with some of them in person 
and maybe even tour them maybe around the community. I know that's something that Councillor White has been wanting to do for some time and, and I'm hoping that maybe uh, in, in the next few weeks or maybe a month that maybe some of these restrictions will be lifted and then we'll be able to uh, to meet with these individuals and, and give them a, a good uh, uh, rundown of what uh, this community has to offer and, and how much you know they can have a good life here as well and, and, uh, and work at a good facility that we have in, in Swan Valley. Council or Deputy Mayor when Tony mentioned about the RISE meeting uh, on the same day um, and uh, further to that obviously we'll be uh, coming together with a recommendation from uh, the committee but again we'll talk about that in camera. Uh, a week later I uh, had a, a vet board meeting that was much needed and uh, we had a lot of stuff to go over and uh, we did a lot of catch up and uh, obviously we passed uh, several uh, resolutions and rates and so far including rates and, and our budget for 2022 which doesn't really much differ or def differ from uh, 2021 levies basically stay about the same and uh, a, a fairly large discussion about um, the uh, the smaller animals versus the larger is, is quite a, an interesting thing how that trend has changed um, yes we did elect a new uh, chair and, and that's councillor Ford from uh, Mountain. Um, we did have a, a, another large discussion about uh, the building that uh, I guess you could say we as municipal partners own uh, at the clinic uh, of the clinic and uh, we have to go through an assessment of uh, the state of the, of the building. There are some obviously some uh, some repair issues that we need to, to look at. So we're looking at having somebody do an assessment of that because there has not been any uh, repairs or maintenance, fairly large anyways, for at least 20 years. Um, I'm continuing on working and discussing with uh, Chief Janai and Chief J uh, Zastri uh, on a plen plenary discussion at our spring AMM uh, meeting. Uh, this will, we will actually have an opportunity to make a presentation before the delegates at the spring uh, convention uh, to discuss our processes that we went through with uh, TLE, uh, Treaty Land Entitlement, uh, in urban areas, in particular Swan River, where we have two at Sapatoya Cree Nation, and we have one that's on coming up, actually, with Wesque First Nations. So um, I'm looking forward to that. And I actually had a good conversation with Chief Janai today and, uh, and he's looking forward to that and, and planning that, which is obviously I think is in April. So he's uh, looking forward to that and, uh, and definitely want to include Chief Zastri because obviously we have uh, a new one coming up with them. Um, I also had some discussion this past week or last week with uh, the chair for the Swan Valley School Division. Chair Wolchak, and again, that's something that we'll talk about in camera as well, but uh, we had several discussions about some issues uh, that the school division is, is dealing with. And other than that, uh, that was my my week or two weeks, I guess you could say. And uh, Mr. Poole, do you have anything that you'd like to report? Uh, yeah, just a couple of follow-up items. Uh, tomorrow meeting with Protective Services Chair to prepare for Friday's meeting with the RCMP regarding our federal contract. <coughs> uh, I've had no uh, contact yet with Minnesota's Bozeman regarding our purchase services, so we have contacted, starting to contact the Reed, uh, but still have not heard anything back. Uh, the airport just sending out our, our chemical sprayer uh, use agreements uh, for them to prepare for the summer. I met with QP last week as promised in our negotiations to go over job descriptions of our new recreation positions. And uh, preparing for the uh, AMM Spring Convention Municipal Indigenous uh, presentation that the mayor touched on. And we'll be sending out notices for uh, updated uh, voter registration lists for the public. And that's it. Okay, moving on, if there's nothing else. 8.1, Building Inspector Report.
resolve that, resolve that as for Schedule C of the building bylaw, the building inspection report be accepted and the modular home be approved to move to 411 George Avenue. Moved by Councilor Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Delorier. Discussion? Councilor Bobbitt. Is that a, what is it? Is it a trailer? It's a modular home? Modular home is different than the trailer. Okay. It sits on a foundation. Okay. All right. Thank you. We, if you remember, we had a, a, there was an application for that. For the discussion, all in favor? Aye. It's carried. 8.2. Whereas the Community Foundation of Swan Valley is a charitable organization that is focused on the creation of permanent endowment funds, and whereas the Community Foundation's goals include the promotion of philanthropy in Swan Valley, sustaining permanent endowed funds, fulfilling community needs, and providing community leadership, and whereas the Community Foundation promotes the development of children, youth, and senior programs, promotes the arts, cultural, and heritage activities, and promotes the enhancement of the environment. And whereas the Community Foundation supports health, wellness, sport, and recreation, as well as other community activities and facilities. And whereas the Community Foundation is a vehicle for donors to contribute their cash, trust, trusts, bequests, or real property to create permanent endowment that will build and improve our Swan Valley community. Therefore, be it resolved that the town of Swan River do hereby proclaim February 20th to the 26th, 2022 as Community Foundation of Swan Valley Awareness Week in the town of Swan River. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. It's carried. 8.3, result of the updated travel policy be approved. Moved by Councilor Bobbick, second by Councilor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. It's carried. <laughs> result of Swan Valley Veterinary, Veterinary and Services District Proposed budget for 2022 be approved. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Bobbick. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. It's carried. 8.5. Result of the Swan Valley Veterinary Services District 2022 municipal contribution in the amount of $7,000. $111.62 be approved for payment. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? Councillor Delorier. Um, the check here for uh, playgrounds are up. I, for the, uh, at the arena, can Mr. Fedorchuk uh, tweak my memory? Was there, did we have a partnership or something with with, with regards to that, or was that just us that purchased that? That is yeah, correct. So we had, um, sorry about that. Uh, that's correct. We had uh, money from Canada 150 uh, grant, I believe, and then the Kinsman Club donated $3,000, so that covered the cost of the playground. Yeah, one of that. I'm one ahead of you. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Councilor. <laughs> Thanks, Councilor Delorier. We'll defer that question to the next one. I, I, I thought I maybe read the wrong one. Thank you, but uh, we're on the uh, the levy for the uh, Veterinarian Services District of seven thousand one hundred and eleven dollars and sixty two cents. Any discussion, Councilor Bobbin? Is that the same as the normal every year? Or? Yeah. It went up a little bit almost two years ago when they changed the the way that the province had um, recommended how the levy should be. 
and, and it based it was it actually it's based on the small animal and large animal so it did it, it went up a little bit for us but uh, not, a, not a huge amount it's been that way for a lot of years what's that it's been that way for a lot of it, years. it has been yeah go ahead different mayor and it just says in the email there that the board is requesting the 2022 funding from participating municipalities with no increase from last year's funding request right and that the contribution remains unchanged from past years and as follows our amount for the town is funded. right yeah it's been about two years when i first was on the board maybe even three years i think it is maybe so okay for the discussion all in favor all right. Opposed, it's carried. Okay, 10.1. Resolve that accounts as follows to hereby approve for payment. General accounts checks number 28519 to number 28567, totaling $455,681.72 as listed on Schedule A. Payroll accounts checks number 5024 to 5031 totaling $89,417.11 as listed on Schedule B. Direct deposits totaling $2,823.05 as listed on Schedule C. And direct deposits totaling $725 as listed on Schedule D. Moved by Deputy Mayor Lintoni, seconded by Councilor Friesen, Councilor Delorier. Um. 28566 Swan Valley Consumers Co op. Is, is that our fuel bill for the month? Uh, I would guess so. I'd have to double check to get that to you. Okay. Further discussion? Councilor Bobbitt? Just, uh, I'd like to know some of these checks. Uh, so, when there's a commitment of something to be bought, uh, as a staff, what, what determines what amount of money? That's in the uh, our procurement by okay, so it's a different staff of different procurement. Yeah. Thank you. For the discussion. All in favor? Aye. It's carried. Ten point two. Resolved that the preliminary financial statements for the 12 months ending December 31st, 2021 be adopted as received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Lintoni, seconded by Councilor Bobbick. Discussion? Councilor Delorier? I guess I just want to, uh, first of all, th thank the uh, administration for, uh, I guess, coming in under budget that that's really helpful going forward we've dealt with a couple of years we've dealt with deficits and that that uh that just makes everything harder going forward so it's a good thing that uh we were not in a deficit position um you know it's it's really interesting to look at this because there's there's some like protective services we we're we we're over budget by one hundred and thirty thousand dollars. um you know a lot of that is rcp cost that type of thing um it, it's, uh, I guess, really telling in, in some of the other categories that uh, we're able to come in at under budget when you, when you have to fight against something like that. So uh, kudos to, uh, to uh, administration on, uh, on being able to do, uh, come in under budget. Uh, and thank you. Further discussion? I'll echo that as well. All in favor? Aye. It's carried. 13. Resolve that pursuance of sections 152.3 of the Municipal Act Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? Uh, we have a crime, a town on notice, town hall meeting. We also have a legal item to do with the utility, Spruce Products Water Agreement, Swan Valley Rise, and Swan Valley School Division. All in favor? Opposed? Aye. It's carried. We're in camera. Uh, 
Right. Resolve this regular meeting of council now be adjourned at 10.05 p.m. Moved by Council Morio, seconded by Councilor Friesen. All in favor? It's carried. We're adjourned. Thank you. Good night.